Welcome to the last part of our presentation. Ordinary persons render to God what is due to Him by giving sufficient time for doing spiritual exercises in the hope that they would foster simplicity, solitude, and reverence within Him or her. Riken specified exercises for his followers, common prayer, the Mass, silence, spiritual reading, and examination of conscience. These are exercises that are ordinary in every sense of the word. Ironically, what are seemingly and supposedly easy exercises to follow are what our restless hearts and minds rebel from observing and staying with. We belong to a period in time that has benefited from tremendous advances in technology. All these advances have made life more comfortable, information more accessible, and people more connected with each other. On the same time, however, these advances have developed in us a strong craving for instant gratification, quick fixes, as well as immediate results in anything, including the spiritual life. We are part of, if not among, a generation of followers of Christ who are growing ever more restless, hyperactive, as well as compulsive. Thus, sitting quietly before God, remaining reverent in our worships, reading patiently, examining ourselves attentively, all of which would have been in the imagination of Riken for his followers, all of this are difficult for restless hearts to do. God is present to us, but perhaps we are unable to be present to God, and this is so long as we are not restful. For us Severians, it is neither in exercises that are innovative or trendy that we are called to encounter God. Our communion with God is supposed to grow when we intentionally and properly take on the simple spiritual exercises that have been passed on to us from Riken and his early followers. However, we should not think that following these ordinary exercises would instantly make us in communion with God. Likewise, they don't promise to give us a quick spiritual high. These exercises, on the other hand, demand from us patient waiting, as well as presence of mind, an ordinary awareness that would make us ready to turn toward God when He expected, unexpectedly comes before us like a flash of lightning. For some of us, several of these exercises may no longer be appealing to our personal preferences. Perhaps part of the problem is that we have not fully heeded the Second Vatican Council's invitation to, to reclaim public worships like the Mass and the Divine Office. When we reclaim these worships as our own, we do our best to bring out its deeper beauty and somehow to make manifest the mystery that underlie such public worships. What this also means is that we do not become satisfied when we as individuals or as communities celebrate such public worships in a manner that is tepid and lifeless. For those who are consecrated brothers, what this means is that we should not be simply satisfied by doing these liturgies because we are expected to celebrate them as religious. Just like silence, spiritual reading, and examination of conscience, the Mass and the Divine Office could become moments of effective personal as well as communal encounter with God. If they are not, then something must be wrong in the way we celebrate them. Or perhaps we are also expecting some immediate spiritual experience when we celebrate them, when rather, we should simply be open to the possibility that we would encounter God in the worship that we render to Him. Perhaps it also means that we should become more intentional in recreating these public worships 
in a manner that is suitable to our life form as a variance. This is not an unusual step to take as several congregations have recreated the divine office in order for this prayer to be better appreciated by the members and in order for this prayer to become a space to also hear the words of their founder. The coming chapter invites all of us to consider in a deeper way how we can become more faithful to the congregational charism that we have been able to describe thus far. To effectively do this, each of us are asked to examine how, whether as individuals or as communities, how we have been responding to the graces that already reside within the congregation as a result of the attentiveness of the founder to the Spirit's inspiration. We are also asked to propose ways through which Severians today could reclaim and reappropriate the spiritual exercises that Riken believed would enrich the spiritual life of his followers, whether men or women, who, in being ordinary, are able to accept all that they are as fully graced children of a loving God. We end this presentation by asking you to reflect and share on the following two questions. Number one, given my current situation and context, can I and my community reclaim the spiritual exercises that Riken encouraged his followers to take? Why or why not? Number two, what do I think should I and my community do to revitalize these spiritual exercises? Don't forget to send the results of your reflection and discussion to the Coordinating Committee of the 27th General Chapter. Thank you very much for your active participation today, and we hope to see you in our next presentation.